is another Hellraiser look, and this time it's the Shatter. If you got kids or siblings you want to scar for life, this is the look to go with. This tutorial requires intermediate skills and takes about one to one and a half hour to prepare. The application time is also around one to one and a half hours, depending on your skills. And since we are working with wire in this video as well, be careful because that wire can be sharp. On your right, you see the supplies used and uh, we recommend working on a face cast. Let's create a shatterer and for that we're gonna need a nice reference image and then a lot of latex and flour to mix up our latex paste. Smear it out over your face cast preferably. There we have the reference image as well. And then with additional latex on our fingertips we smooth the surface out. And you can pretty much use any pointy tool to sculpt with. And we push in our teeth straight into the latex paste like that. And you can of course create your teeth using Alimorph plastic with a little help of the tutorial shown on the screen right now. Alright, so we're using the tiny little tool there to adjust. And then throw on another batch of latex paste and smooth that out as well using additional latex. The upper and lower jaw piece will be separate so you can move your mouth and then the rest of the mask is applied outside that so we get a little bit of extra 3D depth on the complete look. Now we have these little tracks here and the gum of our character so we need to make them just using the back of a brush or anything you have. little bit of tweak using the fingertip with the latex on. And when we're done with that, we leave it to dry or speed dry it using a blow dryer. Then peel it off while applying flour to make sure it doesn't stick to itself. Then we put it right back on the face cast and actually apply a layer of varnish here to begin with to make the latex a little bit more shiny and easier to paint. And we begin with a gum red using grease based colors. Additional brown here along the edge of the teeth and this is a um, process that takes a while and uh, there's a lot of detailing going into it. And what we did here was that after each layer of paint we went over it with the varnish again, the lacquer to give it that uh, extra shine and also to set the colors so that they don't uh, mix into each other when you apply the next layer. Then you get this awesome layered color effect. So in a little bit right there applying that varnish. Speed dry it using a blow dryer and then add on the next layer of paint. Again red. Now. Ellie is going back and forth here with the red and the brown and to mix everything and adding a bit of brighter tone here closer to the teeth and blend that out. So basically find a good reference image and use that as a painting reference. So you can do this any way you like. And when we are done with that paint job, we add another layer of the varnish right there to give that gum a nice wet shine and to set the color. Heading on to the outer headpiece and it's pretty much the same process. Get the latex paste in place, something like this, leaving a hole for the mouth there. And uh, yeah, smooth it out with your finger and additional latex. You can use any tool you got to sculpt and work your way forward. Again, you'll need a reference image of the Shatterer to get everything right. Unless you want to use this method to create some other weird zombie thing. Fixing up the mouth a little bit there. 
and then making little streaks and stuff around the eyes. He looks pretty weird if it's a he. And again, you can use any kind of tool to do this and then go back with your fingers to smooth things out a bit. And this little creature has lips, so this is how we create them. Using a tool, pushing downward, creating the lips like that. And creature in Swedish is varelse. And when you are satisfied with your little creation, Make sure to leave it to dry overnight because it's uh, rather thick layers of latex paste. And when you get back in the morning, you can peel it off using flour again to make sure it doesn't stick to itself. Trim it a little maybe. And just like we did with the mouthpiece, we begin with a layer of varnish and leave that to dry. And then we head on with a color that matches our creature's skin tone. Then heading on with the lips. Red and nice. All right, continuing with purple around the eyes and then a lot of blending to smooth all that color out. Looking good. And one coat of varnish, speed drying it. And then continue painting lips. So again, layers and layers and layers until you feel you have a look that suits your character. And by the way, creature in Swedish is varelse. Mix all that brown out. And yep, additional varnish. Then returning to the eyes. You can of course do this when you have it on your face, but this way is probably a lot easier. Some detailing around the lips to define them a little more. Shading on the inner edges of the lips as well. Blend that shade in good. Then fixing up the highlights and after that a layer of varnish and then you're bam, ready to go. So I'm gonna leave you with Ellie in the mirror. Application time. The shatter has kind of a freaky neck and this I'm gonna recreate using latex and pieces of cotton. Roll up some cotton like a tiny sausage. Try to make it thicker towards the middle and thinner at the end so that it's easier to fade back into your neck. Lightly cover it with latex you just want to cover it and not soak it, otherwise it will take forever to dry. Alternate sides and keep the middle line a bit organic and asymmetrical. Make sure it's dry and then start painting. You don't want any latex on your makeup brushes. I start by covering it all in the same skin tone I used for the prosthetic. Along the middle, the neck is gory and bruised, and I began with red and then continued with dark purple. Work the colors into the creases and drag it out. I am using light brown to make it all look a little bit more dirty and a little bit more bruised. Getting the dark color in between all of the creases and fading it outwards. Making it messy wherever I have skin showing and blending it together with the beige light ivory foundation cream thing I got. And some more purple to match the colors with the prosthetic. Adding more brown, making more blend. In the next step, I'm gonna attach the mask and I'm protecting my hairline and my brows with some Vaseline. Make sure to be thorough, it will hurt if you get latex in your hair. With your hair out of the way, apply your ball cap. 
I didn't put any latex on to attach the ball cap. It sits just fine on the Vaseline and the mask will keep it in place. Mark out where your mask is gonna be and use latex and cotton to create a bumpy head just like we did with the neck. I'm looking at pictures at the same time as I'm doing this just to get some of the bumps looking like his does. So a thin coat of latex, some cotton sausages and another thin coat of latex as a cover on top. When you got a weird looking space helmet, you are done. In Swedish, space helmet would be Rimdhat. Light brown in all of the dents. As contouring and shading goes, adding a dark color will make the dents look deeper. And a light beige on top of all the bumps. Make sure to get all of the white parts. It will be harder to see when the mask is on. I'm using a dark purple to get a bruised look, going over most of the dents. I am going in with a darker brown to get some more depth, blend it together and again try to match it as close as you can to the color scheme of your pre-painted mask. When you're done, cover your lips with black and the tip of your nose with red. If you want to be a space clown, just stop here. Attach the mouthpiece with latex and make sure you get all of the edges. You don't want this part to fall off, so be generous with the latex. And attach the lower part. You don't want latex connecting them because you want to be able to move your mouth. Cover the edges of your mouthpiece and your eyes with paint. Make sure all the skin you want covered is covered before you attach the mask. Apply latex where the mask would sit and attach it. I skipped the mouth area because I didn't want my jaw locked with the mask. Again, because I want to be able to move my mouth. So please try and see what fits your face. When it's placed to your liking, cover the edges and blend it with the rest of the head. I added some cotton around the mask and inside the eyes to make the hole smaller. With the mask on, it can be tricky to see what you're doing, so please be careful not to get latex in your eyes or on any clothes for that matter because it won't come off. Use a hairdryer to dry it all quickly and then use the same colors as before to blend the new pieces with the rest. <laughs> Something instructional. Yay! When the paint job is complete, it's time for the final touch, and that's wire. The shatter got four hooks on each side. Take a short piece of wire and make a loop on one side and the hook on the other. This part is going to be hooked into the, ma blah, 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 the mouth of the mask. You should now have 8 tiny hooks. Cut off 8 longer pieces of wire. The long piece is going to be hooked into the loop of the short piece that you put into the mouth. And now make sure it's got a strong hold. Pull it a little bit. Nice. I use tape to attach it in the back since we're not filming the back. But if you're going to a party, get someone to help you and wire both sides together. Now we just want to finish everything up and use some blood on the inside of the mouth and inside the neck. And he looks gory and as freaky as he's supposed to. Blah. And now you're ready. Thanks for watching. I hope you love this look just as much as we did. And if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Tell us what you want to see next and subscribe.